Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, we're going to continue with our exploration into Yang Cheng Fu's 13 original postures and exploring the, the depths of it. And um, but first, I would like to talk a little bit about the Yao. So it's uh, something I haven't mentioned in a while, and it's something that's really important, but I tend to ignore it uh, deliberately because uh, uh, most people aren't ready for it when they first start to practice Tai Chi Chuan. And uh, sometimes that means for the first 10 years or so, just because the qua is that the hip joints and that's if those are locked up, which they are in just about everybody, then um, if you try to talk about using the yao or this the, the lower part of your back, the around the sacrum and coccyx area, and if you talk about doing that, you're punching into the the qua. So the qua is there, that that area. The uh, just to show, just to for people who have um, um, you know just tuning in on YouTube, this area here, the inguinal crease where your your thigh meets your torso, this is where we focus. But it what we're doing is we're monitoring the hip joint, which is right around in here. And so we we set the knee and uh, so that we can release down into the into this and we're able to move the hips very fluidly. So there's no resistance there. So the the yao here is the this area right here. So you got the this uh, triangle, which is the sacrum, and then below that is your tailbone, your coccyx. And so we, to be able to move this, you want to be able to, you want to be able to, to use that to generate power, but if the qua is, is stuck, then you're, you're trying to shift gears without first putting in the clutch. The releasing the qua and, and, Getting sung in the qua allows you is you know I consider it as like putting in the clutch in a car. It's like you want to shift gears, you you stomp on the clutch pedal and 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 that disengages the engine so that you can you can you can shift. For those of you who have never drawn, driven the standard transmission, all this is gibberish. But uh, what it's saying is if you are resisting yourself, if you're getting in your own way, you have that impasse there, which just creates more tension in the body. So that's why I've emphasized for so long releasing the qua, because even after you know decades of Tai Chi, people ha tend to hang on to that. And the reason for that, that that hip tension, the reason for it is because in your in your butt there are certain muscles which are very responsive to stress. So if you get stressed out, then there's a tendency to to clench these muscles in your butt and that locks up your hips and it locks up your sacrum your and your yao and everything gets gets kind of frozen and until you learn to be able to disengage that mechanism that stress response you're going to you know anytime let's like, say you're playing push hands and somebody pushes you it's like ah oh, there's a tendency to lock up there and um so uh, what we want to do with the with the qua is we create a, this thing that you do, which enables you to get out of that stress response. So that way you're able to respond to the incoming energy and just dissipate it through your by shifting into the you know the the leg and and just allowing the body to turn. So the I'm not going to get in too much on the qua right now, but I want to talk about the the yao now. So the once you've got that, once you are able to put in the clutch, once you're able to disengage that that tension in your hip joints, then being able to move from that lower part of your spine, the sacrum and the coccyx, is it changes everything. It what it does is it connects up the lower half of your body your legs, feet, etc., with the upper half. And 
so it becomes this pivot point for all the energy that's in your legs. So you try to move, and if you are doing it without engaging that yao first, then your uh, your movements are going to be disconnected. They may look fluid, they may look connected, but the the energy will be broken at the at the um, at the waist. So uh, the idea here is to be able to to connect up and then consciously put your attention on that that lower part of your spine there and connect that up to the upper part of your spine and into your head. So if you, you know, as we've been talking about, you know, tucking in the chin and reaching with the, the crown of the head, then you have this, this lengthening of, from the, the top of the head down to your coccyx, your spine is being uh, elongated and it creates space between the, ver the vertebrae. So most people, as they get older, they tend to shrink down. Gravity compresses the spine. It makes it get smaller. It makes you get smaller as you get older. And we have a way of changing that so that you can actually get a little taller as you get older. And it's something that if you consciously do this, you will you'll feel your spine creating more space between the vertebrae. And so the the spine will work better. It won't the the vertebrae won't be grinding against each other and kind of wearing out the discs there. And it allows that, elongates that and allows the energy to connect up. So you're connecting up with the earth chi and the chi of the heavens, your your feet and your and your head, they are all part of one system at that point. And so there's there's not this this disconnect happening in your body. So let's do a, let's get up and we're going to do a little a few uh, uh, Yao exercises just to get to warm up into this. And then we'll go into the uh, Yang Cheng Fu. We'll take it from there. Okay, so why don't you stand up, please? Okay, so let's um, let's just begin by 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 doing. So I want you to just notice here this this part of my my body. So I want to to go from one leg to to the other, and just I'm focusing on this area. You can actually put your hand on your on your sacrum, and so let's let's say I'm going to shift into my right leg. I'm going to feel the the, the heel of my right foot, I'm going to set my right knee and I'm going to spiral down. I'm going to release my claw. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to turn, I'm going to consciously turn my body and use my, my yao to, to make that happen. Now I'm going to go into my left foot, set my, feel my left heel, set my left knee, and now I'm going to turn and I'm going to use my yao to propel my body to the left and twist around so my my torso moves toward the right my my uh back moves towards the left and now i'm going to go to my right leg and same thing here so the idea is you're bringing your attention to the yao the yao is making the movements now bring your arms up and you're going to turn and Notice that the whole body turns as a unit. When we do this, we're connecting up the spine and feeling, <clears throat> feeling that energetic connection all the way through the body, through the arms, through the fingers. And we're going back. So now step forward with your left foot and we're going to go into the left leg and sink into that left leg, sink the yell, and then you're going to you use your yao to, to make that happen. Now we're taking the right claw and then <coughs> turn to, to the right using the, the yao. So really this is just a matter of focusing 
on that part of your body. So, and using that to initiate the movements. So we're, when we're doing this, we're initiating from the Yao. Once we've, once we've mastered this guy here so that we can use the Qua to, to empty out the resistance, then we can now say, okay, now <coughs> we're gonna generate some, some power. We're gonna create power with the, using the Yao. What that does on an energetic level is to, <coughs> excuse me. A little drink here. Um, it connects up the, the conception vessel and the governing vessel, which is the central channel that, that energizes all the meridians in the, in the whole body. So once we get that working, then we're doing that on a, um, on a physiological level, it is balancing out your, your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system. So all these things are cool, and we're not going to talk about those right now. We're going to get right into the, the Yang Cheng Fu. I just wanted to kind of bring this out, because I want you to focus on the Yao as you're moving. Now, a, a few months ago, we talked about use, using the tail whenever we are we were like wagging our tail whenever we're doing our dragon exercises. And this is a much quieter. Tai Chi is a much quieter type of move than, than the Bagua dragon. It's much bigger and, and more flamboyant. This is a very quiet way of wagging your tail. And uh, almost imperceptibly, uh, but you are, you are internally focused on, these, on this part. <laughs> okay, so to continue, uh, let's um, uh, let's let's start with the uh, uh, the three pillars. So we're going to begin with the uh, weight in the balls of the feet, and the knees are unlocked. Reach with the crown of the head and tuck in the chin. So we're getting that elongation there. You drop your yao. So, so what's happening here is you're, it's not, not exaggerated. You're not doing this, right? You're, you're just relaxing your lower back and, and dropping that so that your tailbone kind of points down rather than back. <laughs> and uh, so you feel the balls of your feet. You reach with your elbows and open the shoulder joints and feel your fingers, point with your index fingers and establish your energetic coherence. And that quad, we just want to spiral down, turn, and to really feel that nice and fluid, nice and open there, very sung in the qua. But we don't want any resistance, and no internal resistance when we use our yao. Okay, and uh, so let's go, uh, let's go back to the uh, review what we've covered so far. And this, but this time also, I want you to really focus on, on moving from the Yao. So that is a, a conscious intent to make that, to make that happen. <coughs> All right, here we go. So I have to start over here. So, so feel into the balls of both feet and really connect up there. Feel your three pillars. Now go into the right heel and spiral down to the left. So you're loading up that right leg and then turning to the right, nice and slow. So you're using your yao to turn your body. 
this is going to create a lot of chi, a lot of chi flow when you start to consciously do this. So you're loading up that right leg, now pick up the left heel, and then step out to the left and feel your feel your left heel and then you start to load that up. You're gonna turn from the yao, sink into that left leg, and then turn using the yao and turn to the right. You sink into your heels. And then go into the balls of your feet, step the knees and reach with the wrists. Now reach with the fingers. And real important right now is you want to open up your back between your shoulder blades. You want to feel that your back stretching out there. So you're creating a connection between your two arms. You're opening the, uh, the energy in your back and, and allowing the, uh, your spine to to the energy to flow along your spine more freely. Now sink into your heels and reach down with your elbows, bend your wrists, fingers come up as your hands come down. You're sinking this very yin and then go into the balls of your feet and reach down and reach open up yang. Now sink into your left heel and you're turning. Okay, spiraling down to the left. You feel that that yao as you do that. And now turn, go to the right, or turn to the left rather. Feel the ball of your left foot and reach with your right hand opening. Reach down with your left hand. Now feel the right heel, set the right knee and spiral down left and then turn. Feel your yaw as you turn. Your nice relaxed movement, no resistance in your claw and reach open and open up your back as you do this too you're extending out and feel the left heel sink into your left claw spiral to down to the right now turn to the left use your yaw to turn the body sink into the right heel spiral down to the left and turn. Use your yaw to turn to the right and feel the ball of your right foot as you turn and reach open. Feel open up between your shoulder blades. Feel that. Now feel the right heel and spiral down to the right. So you're releasing the right claw, you're creating some space there, loading up the right leg, stepping out with the left foot. And now feel the left heel and set the left knee spiral down to the right. You're loading up the left leg now. And use your yaw to turn. Turn your, your turning, reaching with the crown of your head, opening up your spine as you do this, reaching. Open your shoulder blades. And sink into your right heel, spiral down to the left. Use your yaw to turn. Drop your right elbow and spiral down to the right. And then ball of your right foot and reach up. Use that yaw to reach up and open. Your right hand comes up, wrist comes up around ear height. And now feel the right heel spiral down to the right. You're loading up. The right claw, pick up the left heel and step out. Left heel, set the left knee. You're loading up that left claw now. Left hand comes up and open. Feel that reaching that you're wide open there. And then use your yell and turn. Straighten the back leg. 
Now feel the left heel spiral down to the right. Reach up with the right hand, step in, and then spiral down to the left. Use your yaw and then turn back to center. And on the heel of your left foot, right fist under your navel, reaching out with the left hand. Pause and feel into that. Feel that energetic connection. You really want to open, open your shoulders. You want to really allow the meridians to open. On, in your arms and your shoulders and your chest and your back, feel that connection. Now, feel the right heel spiral down to the right. Step out a little bit with the left foot and then feel the left heel spiral down to the right and use your yaw to turn and reach out with the right hand. Palm up. Feel the right heel spiral down to the left and then turn. Feel that using that yaw to move the body, to make it nice and very um, connected throughout. Feel the connection from your foot through your body and all the way up to your fingers. You feel that elongation and then feel the ball of the right foot and turn and reaching up with the right hand reaching down with the left hand to your so your your posture really nice and open here it's a very big form so we're opening the chest opening the shoulders and this is is undoing the effects of years of kind of getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You're reclaiming lost territory with the with these movements. You're expanding. You're allowing the chi to flow in the chest and your shoulders. Ah, so now feel the right heel and spiral down to the left. So you're turning you're from the yao, right hand circles down, left hand comes across. And Reach up with the right hand, spiral down to you in your right claw. You're turning with the yaw, and then step with the left foot. Step the left knee, spiral down to the right, and then turn using your yaw to, to turn and reach with your right hand. Now sink into your left heel. Spiral down to the left and reach out with your left hand. And then sink into your right heel and turn to the right. You're loading up the right leg, right claw, and using your yaw to turn to the right. And you come back and step on the heel of your left foot and play guitar. Your posture looks like that. So you're, you're reaching out. Notice that, that I'm not down here. I'm, I'm extending outward but the it's not up here it's there's a the shoulders are very relaxed as i'm doing that so there's an extension but without muscular tension so then um uh, did we get to this one last week yep so i mean the next one yeah striker fingers did we get striker fingers oh good okay so we're going to so, I think we did. so Right heel, so you spiral down to the left, the left hand comes back, the right hand reaches out. So feel that extension there. So notice that the yao has turned to the left, you're reaching out with the right hand, left hand is down, and then you step forward with the left foot and sink into that left claw, the left heel, and, and then turn and reach with the fingers. So you're just uh, turning and strike with, uh, step back to strike with fingers. Okay, so I think that's as far as we got. So the, uh, going forward from here, let's. Uh, I don't know if we did strike with fingers. We don't, we do, let's, let's, let's do, uh, review that again, uh, just in case. Um, so uh, where are we? We're. Um, play guitar. Play guitar. 
and then uh, yeah okay so here we have play guitar so the the I'll do it facing this way now so we're from from here so it feel the right heel and spiral down to the right so you're loading up that right claw but you're also turning from with the with gently with the with the yaw if you do that and then as you turn to the left simultaneously you pull back with your left foot and reach forward with your right hand and left hand comes back so but that corresponds to that turning from the yaw as we do that so we have that that extension there so you're you're here you spiral down to the right and then reach out as you as you step back you're reaching out with the right hand and pulling back with the left here and you and so it's if this yaw is causing I uh, mean a pull back with the with the left hand it's like it's like a uh, like a gear mechanism that's driving this this forward that is creating the power for this for this bigger movement otherwise it's just you're just reaching out with your arms and there's there's nothing there but this connects up the juice to 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 the uh, to the hands as they reach out and pull back so now you spiral down to the left and step out with the left foot spiral down to the left into the left claw so you're loading up that left leg and turn from the yaw and reach out with your left hand fingers up and your right hand palm down so going back to play guitar spiral down to the right and then turn from the yaw reaching out as you step back with the left foot reach out with the right hand feel the the, the hands pulling in opposite directions you're creating these poles in opposition as we do this it's like stretching a rubber band so now we spiral down and step out so spiraling down permits us to load up that right claw and we can step out with the, the left foot <clears throat> then we sink into the left heel spiral down to the left the claw is turning the yaw is turning the uh the claw is released on the left side and now we turn and strike with fingers you feel that you're pressing down with the right hand reaching out with the left fingers are extending so doing it facing you it's spiral down and reach turn step spiral down and then strike fingers and one more time spiral down to the right step back reach out feel that extension feel the pulling back feel the poles in opposition step spiral down and then turn use your yaw and extend going forward from here the next move looks like this let me step back a little bit we're going from from here so I sink into my left claw, I pivot, spiral down, and then turn, and then sink. Okay. So here we go. So we're at the uh, uh, strike with fingers. So you feel the left heel spiral down to the left. You're loading up that left claw, you're spiraling down, and pivot on the right heel so that your toes are torn turn toward the front of the room so now you feel the right heel set the right knee and you spiral down to the left you're loading up the left claw <clears throat> you're turning from the yaw as you do that 
And then you turn from the yaw again, and you're turning to the right this time. And as you do that, you're going to pivot on the right heel. And the right hand comes up, left hand presses down, and sink. Okay, so when we're sinking here, we're going to like this move. It's actually a transitional move, and it's part of actually the, the, the one that, that follows this. But I like to do it as its own distinct thing. So you're, you're sinking into a 50-50 mob bow stance. <coughs> mob bow means like a horse stance. You're pressing down with the right hand, reaching up with the left. So this is, has a heaven and earth kind of quality. You're reaching up to the heavens reaching down to the earth, you're plugging in. Okay, so here we go, going from the, uh, uh, da, 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 we're and the, uh, um, strike of fingers. So also whenever you do the strike of fingers, it helps if you make a very narrow step. In other words, when you're going from the play guitar, you step back, and when you step out, you the feet are almost in line. So you're here like that. So when you pivot on the right heel, you spiral in and then pivot. Your feet are kind of parallel when you do that. And that, uh, to me, that, that was a, a, a cheat that I figured out that uh, helped me to get the, get into position with that one. So here we are. So we're going to, uh, uh, from uh, let's say from play guitar, we spiral down to the right and then turn reaching out, bow down to the left step, bow down to the left in the left leg, and then turn, use the yell and reach out, strike with fingers. Feel that connection, feel the power. We're not talking about, just talking about chi now, we're talking about jin. We're talking about, about taiji power, the soft power taiji. When I stepped out, I wanted to step fairly narrow stance, so that now I pivot on the right heel, and I can sink into my right leg, and I use my yao to turn my body, and bring my right hand overhead, my, or my left hand overhead, my right hand pressing down, and then sink. And so this is sort of a transitional move from the, the front, uh, the one, one part of the form to the next, and it's a transition in the, the posture that we're exploring as well. But it's a nice place to gather your chi. So to continue there, we're going to, we feel the left heel spiral down to the left and step in with the right foot. The right hand comes up and turns into a fist. So feel that this move, it looks like this. Okay, so we're going from here, we sink into the left leg and use the yaw to turn. The right hand comes up, step in with the right foot. Notice the hand is not reaching out this way, it's coming up kind of vertical. Because now I'm going to turn, reach out with my elbow. I'm still in my left leg, notice. Really feeling that central equilibrium in my left leg. And then step out with the right foot. And push my right knee out and spiral down to the left. I'm loading up that right claw. I'm going to use my yaw to turn and to power my hand to come down like this. So doing it facing you, I'm going from uh, boom, like this. I spiral in, boom, like that. Then it comes out like this and strike. So striking with, turn and strike with back fist. So the, let's take it from the, uh, the strike with fingers over here. And uh, we pivot on the right heel. I'm sorry, 
This is uh, this way. <laughs> Left hand's out there. So I pivot on the right heel, sink into the right knee. I'm loading up that right quad. So I want you to just feel this, feel the energy of this. I'm less concerned about you memorizing the, the choreography here and more about the, getting the actual energy of this. But now as we turn, using Yao to turn, right hand is reaching up, left hand is reaching down, sink. So feel that. Bow down to the right and then turn to the left. Right foot steps in, right fist comes up. Turn and step. Right knee, set. And then use your yell to turn and strike with the fist, with the back fist. Okay. So let's uh, put those movements together and do it a few times just to kind of groove it in. So going from play guitar, let's spiral down to the right, and then step back, reach forward with your right hand, left hand comes back, feel that extension, feel the, feel the yao connecting up the whole, the whole system, reaching, reaching with the crown of the head, and then step Forward with the left foot, set the left knee, or set the, feel the right left heel, set the left knee, and then spiral down to the left. So you're reaching out with that right hand, pulling back with the left, and now we're going to reverse that. We're going to pull back with the right and reach out with the left, but using the yell to, to power it. Think of that left leg so that we can pivot on the right heel. Feel the right, set the right heel, set the right knee, and then turn, pivot on the left heel, reach up with the left hand, sink down with the right hand, reach down with the right hand, reach up with the left. And then Barrel down to the left, loading up the left leg and reach up to the right fist, step in with the right foot. Turn, reach with the elbow and step. Right heel, barrel down to the left. And then feel the right ball as you power that with the core, with the with the yell as you Turn and strike with the back fist. Okay, let's take this and uh, take it from the top. With uh, without talking through. Without talking through, yeah. So we're just going to do it nice and slow. I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to just follow along as best you can. And begin.
pause for a moment and just allow that energy to circulate. Step in, deep breath, and disappear the chi, sink into your heels. Pause for a moment, just feel into the emptiness. Please have a seat. Great. Any questions, thoughts, uh, insights you'd like to share with uh, with all the people out there in video land? Uh, Lynn. <laughs> I was super impressed by the way um, really focusing on the Yao made me aware of JBS, right? And made it almost impossible to JBS if you do the Yao right. We'll have to explain that acronym for people who are just tuning in. <laughs> the, uh, the little jutting butt sy syndrome where your hip goes out just a tiny bit there. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's, you do it and you're not really paying attention. Um, and uh, you can't do it if you're actually moving from the app. So it's just Beautiful. magical. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So important. So important. Yeah. Any any lateral movement of your butt is going to uh, is going to uproot you. And uh, so getting the qua in and using your your yao to really get really aware of your pelvis and how I mean, who thinks of their pelvis, you know, is that but what is that you doing? <laughs> it's it's really the keystone for the whole operation. It links up north and south, it you know, east and west. It's it's really it's huge. So uh, getting that it, uh, it, it it's really big. So g getting that awareness there is is huge. So thank you, Lynn. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, well, and that's kind of what I was going to say is that it like really solidifies the connection. Um, you can really f feel how much. Um, more completely linked the upper body and the lower body are. I mean, it, and it's like putting your focus there really changes stuff. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Scott. Um, I imagine people watching this video are gonna say, how do I know when my claw is loose enough to focus on the out? Good, good point. Uh, I'd say do it small and and whenever anytime you bump into resistance, you know, and you you're trying to 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 turn using your your yao, trying to use you know do that, and you're meeting resistance from inside, then you know that oh the qua hasn't quite quite uh, released yet. But like what Lynn was saying, also uh, to demonstrate, you know the. The idea of JBS is that 
So I'm going to use my yaw. I'm going to push with my my yaw, and my claw is not doing. Something's got to give somewhere. So usually, what happens is this: I get, I just push laterally, lock up the hip, and then I get jutting butt syndrome. So it's like it. And this is many people just do their form like this. They just rock back and forth like that, and that's that's you know perfectly fine. But this this takes it to a point where you can actually use that that whole body connection to generate that soft power of Taiji Chuan. So instead of going like that, the if I'm turning and I say, oh, I'm reading resistance here, and if I if I go any farther, then my butt's going to go outside. I just know that uh, I have to release the claw a little bit more. Uh, and that only comes through practice and, and just exploration and just taking taking your time with it and, and saying, oh, what does that feel like? What, what, am, how much am I fighting myself here? Thanks, Scott. That's, that's a good question. That's very helpful. Anybody else? Jonathan. So we don't, I mean, we yes, we're initiating from the yell, but there's a sense almost that if you, there could be the danger of cutting yourself off from initiating with your feet, because it really is the feet that gives the permission for each movement. Like you don't want to move the yell without being connected at your feet. So, so sometimes I felt, am I like, if I put too much emphasis on my yell, am I forgetting the lower half of my body? I don't know. It's something I need to explore. It's not like I'm sure about what I'm saying here. Yeah, no. Um, and of course, it's all the above. But it, so I guess the point goes from, when I talk about the three pillars, these are the things that if you're not doing them, just stop and and, <laughs> and do those until you get that, get them in. You're, you have to have your central equilibrium. You have to have that, feel that foot connection with the earth. The you know the the energetic coherence. The you unkink the hose. All those things. So when I say it initiates from the out, we're already assuming those other things, right? We are assuming that you are connecting with your feet. <clears throat> we're assuming that you're. You're got open the jade pillow gate. We're assuming that you know you're in central equilibrium, all those things, because that's just like the whole conversation could never would never get past that if we just talked about that. <coughs> so uh Richard. Um I, I think we think of establishing our three pillars as we're beginning. We don't remember that we should be establishing our three pillars in every posture after every movement. Or during every movement, and that's that's, that's a different that's, kind of thing. Sometimes yeah. that that's a that's a great point. That's a great point. It should never ever leave you while you're doing your form. It's like you're you know you're doing it, and you're always aware of that. And so that's why I you know introduce it at the, the beginning of every session is just a, a reminder. Like, hey guys, this is if you forget these things, go back and and put them in because they are crucial to everything else you're doing. And so getting that so that it becomes, you know, I, I mentioned this years ago where I talked to you guys and I said, <clears throat> you want to get it so that you can put your three pillars in in less than a second. Right. You know, and it sounded like a strange idea at the time, but it's a, uh, that is, you know, where we're going for. We're going to like, it. It's only a thought away that you you've got the you know your central equilibrium, your energetic coherence, and you've unkinked the hose. You got those all those things there, boom, they're set. So the closer you can get to that that marker there of under a second, the higher level your kung fu is going to be. So and that that comes, Jonathan. Yeah, I think. To, to Richard's point there, it, it's like, yes, you can initiate, you can say that phrase, initiate with the yell, but the foot always gives the permission to initiate. It doesn't, I mean, that, that context is always there for the initiation, I guess. Yes, yes. That's a, that's a, that's a good way of putting it. 
So you always always have that that connection. If, if you don't have your your foot connected to the earth and you're not aware of it, then you know, on some level, then you're you're probably not really really stable. You're probably not rooted. So we right, and no movement is initiated without root. I guess that's the point. That's right. right. So what we're talking about here, I guess, is going going from stillness into motion. Once we, you know, once we've established this in stillness, now now what? Anytime mm -hmm. we're moving from stillness into motion, we are taking those things that we've established in stillness and we're saying, okay, to begin the conversation, it's coming from the Yao, because the Yao is really kind of centrally located on the body. And it's it's the you know, it's governing the that that motion so i talked about the you know the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nerves they the sympathetic nerves which control your motion run parallel to your spine and they meet at the coccyx they meet at mm. your tailbone and mm. they, there's, there's these mm. two lines that go down and they meet at a single point and that single point's called the ganglion impar I love that name, but it's a uh, it's it, it's right on the uh, the anterior part of your coccyx, and um, I heard it called the walking brain, the ganglion impar, because it is it's where the the sympathetic nervous system is. Everything kind of pivots down to that one point, and so if we have awareness there, the Chinese call it the Wei Lu, the uh, that, that I think you you want to you want to initiate from your way Lu, and uh, that is the that sends the energy shooting up your spine. It's kind of like Kundalini energy going up the uh, uh, the, the the thrusting vessel up to the spine into the brain. So we're getting into the alchemy of it all here, but that's uh, that's what's going on here. So at a very practical level. You know, you having that focus, that awareness of your yao, of your sacrum, of your coccyx, gives you an entry point into this pre-conscious part of your body, your energy, your uh, your uh, nervous system, you know, the autonomic nervous system. And when you get that going, then cool stuff happens. So... All the stuff is tying together. So good. Anybody else? Great. Thank you all so much. It's been really fun. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Maria. Maria. Thank you, Maria. Bye -bye. Maria. See y'all. You have a good have a great trip, Nick and Lynn. Thank yeah. you.